Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to ask a question. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Welcome to the definitive CEDH compilation of Rocco Cabaretti Caterer. This deck takes advantage of having a tutor in the command zone to assemble very flexible lines. Rocco has multiple one card win conditions, including food chain lines, kiki jiki lines, and birthing pod lines. The ability to find whatever you need allows this deck to make multiple win attempts even when disrupted. Mike won the horseback riding competition and gets to start us off. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a temple garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a turn one, deafening silence. The table rethinks their opening strategy as Mike passes the turn. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays a polluted delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tundra onto the battlefield. He casts a mana vault and ends his turn. Dawn draws and plays a windswept teeth. He casts a mana crypt. Shut off by deafening silence, he passes. Nick draws and plays a forest. He casts a birds of paradise. Nick ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a plateau. He casts a mana vault. He casts a land of war elves. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Dawn cracks his windswept teeth, pays a life, and fetches up a tundra onto the battlefield. Ashani draws and plays a command tower. He casts a Mystic Remora. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Dawn loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Dranith Magistrate. He casts a Torpor Orb. Remora triggers and Ashani draws. The table feels the stacks squeeze even more, and Dawn passes the turn. Nick draws and plays the Land of War Wastes. Not wanting to feel left out, he casts a Collector Roof, shutting down the board even more. The table groans, and Nick gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and casts a Sylvan Library. Remora triggers, and Ashani draws. Mike passes. During his upkeep, Ashani lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He casts a Rhystic Study. Ashani ends his turn. During his upkeep, Don loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Chrome Mox. Rhystic triggers and Dawn pays. Chrome Mox resolves and Dawn imprints Mana Vortex. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Dranith Magistrate. Ashani takes it and Dawn gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws, plays an Ancient Tomb, and passes. During his draw step, Mike draws two extra cards through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a Carpet of Flowers, paying the Rhystic Tax. Finished up, Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Nick taps his Ancient Tomb and his Lana War Waste to help cast Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam resolves and Nick reveals an Assassin's Trophy, Body Snatcher, Forest, Sylvan Safekeeper, Zulaport Cutthroat, Mana Vault, Utopia Sprawl, Nature's Claim, Lesser Mastercore, Mana Confluence, Autumn's Veil, Phyrexian Tower, Mana Crypt, Nurturing Peatland, Overgrown Tomb, Arbor Elf, Verdant Catacombs, Lotus Petal, Marsh Flats, Deathrite Shaman, Devoted Druid, Earthcraft, Crop Rotation, Forbidden Orchard, Allosaurus Shepherd, Veil of Summer, Dothy Voidwalker, Swamp, Dark Ritual, Cabal Therapy, Dark Confidant, Carpet of Flowers, and a Survival of the Fittest, deciding to stop there. The turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an island. He passes. During his upkeep, Dawn loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Dranith. Mike takes it, and Dawn passes to Nick. Nick draws and starts off his turn by casting Allosaurus Shepherd. Rhystic triggers, and Ashani draws. Nick plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Dawn a spirit to cast Assassin's Trophy, targeting Deafening Silence. Rhystic triggers, and Ashani draws again. Deafening Silence is destroyed, and Mike fetches up a forest onto the battlefield. Next, Nick casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing a forest as an additional cost. Rhystic triggers, and Ashani draws. In response, Ashani casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Allosaurus Shepherd in order for the table to be able to interact this turn. Chain resolves, Shepherd bounces, and Nick continues the chain. He sacks the land, targeting Rhystic Study. 
In response, Ashani casts Dispel, countering crop rotation. Then Rhystic bounces, and Ashani stops the chain. Nick casts Lotus Petal. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Slaughter Pact, destroying his own Collector Oof. He sacks his Lotus Petal to cast Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds three green through his carpet. He casts Survival of the Fittest. He casts a Mana Vault. Seeing that he doesn't have a way to win this turn, he must now set up for his next turn. He casts Nature's Claim, targeting his own Mana Crypt. Crypt is destroyed, and Nick gains four life. Finished up, Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Mike casts a Fused Wear and Tear, targeting Survival of the Fittest and Torpor Orb. In response, Ashani casts Swan Song. Wear and Tear is countered, and Mike creates a 2-2 bird. Nick discards the hand size, and the turn moves to Mike. During his draw step, Mike draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. In his first main phase, he adds three red through his carpet. He channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Torpor Orb. Orb is destroyed, and Dawn fetches up a Godless Shrine onto the battlefield tap. Next, Mike casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters, and Mike fetches up a Grand Abolisher into his hand. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He casts an uncounterable Grand Abolisher. It resolves, locking out his opponents this turn. Mike casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals 2. He fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. It enters, and Mike creates 6 treasures. He casts Vivian on the Hunt. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Imperial Recruiter and fetching up a Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. Guardian enters, and Mike flickers Vivian on the Hunt. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Felidar Guardian, fetching up Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic Guide enters, and Mike returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Guardian enters, and flickers Vivian again. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Felidar Guardian, and fetching up a Kiki-Jiki Mirror Breaker onto the battlefield. Mike activates Kiki-Jiki, creating a copy of Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide enters, and Mike returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Guardian enters, and Mike flickers Kiki-Jiki. Mike activates Kiki-Jiki, creating a copy of Felidar Guardian. Guardian enters, and flickers Kiki-Jiki again. Mike presents a loop of activating and flickering Kiki-Jiki, creating infinite Felidar Guardian tokens with haste. He moves to combat, attacks with everything, and Mike wins the game. Sean won the Mobility Challenge and gets to start us off. But Zack has a pre-game action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Grim Monolith, which has everyone worried what in the world is in his hand to have that be his worst card. Sean draws a card per turn and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Soul Ring. Sean passes. Alex draws, plays a Verdant Catacombs, and passes. Ryan draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Grim Monolith. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Ryan ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mana Crypt and passes to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts Mox Amber. Sean passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Alex cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Enlightened Tutor. In response, Zack casts Dispel, countering Tutor. The turn moves to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Plains. He casts Weathered Runestone. All of his opponents sigh collectively, and Alex sends the turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds one green through his carpet. He casts an Arbor Elf. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Sensei's Divining Top. He activates Top, looking at and rearranging the top three. Zack ships the turn to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He cracks it and taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his commander, Cormella Glamour Thief. Sean gives the turn to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Swamp. He casts his commander, Karlov of the Ghost Council. He casts an Aether Vial and passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He casts a Tender Wall. He casts a Talisman of Unity. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack spends his top. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He taps it to help cast his commander, Elsha of the Infinite. Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Sean taps his commander and his Ancient Tomb to help cast an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. In response, Zack activates his top, drawing a card and putting top on top. Still in response, Ryan channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Weathered Runestone. Runestone is destroyed, and Alex fetches up a Godless Shrine into play tapped. Then Rift bounces all of Sean's opponent's non-land permanents. The turn moves to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Sean gives the turn to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Plains. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Smothering Tithe. In response, Sean casts Swansong. 
Smothering Tithe is countered, and Alex creates a 2 2 bird. Next, he recasts his commander, Karlov of the Ghost Council. He recasts Aether Vile and gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds two green through his carpet. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Grim Monolith. He casts Avacyn's Pilgrim. He casts Arbor Elf. Ryan passes. Zack draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He taps his Fiery Islet to help recast his commander, Elsha of the Infinite. Zack passes. During his upkeep, Sean loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Alex pays to untap his Mana Ball. Also in his upkeep, he puts a counter onto Aether Vile. He draws and plays a Swamp. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with his Bird. Sean takes it, and Alex passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 4. It enters, and Ryan fetches up an Arena Rector onto the battlefield. He exiles Simeon's Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Shatter Skull Smashing, where X equals 2, targeting Rector. In response, Sean casts an offer you can't refuse. Shatter Skull is countered, and Ryan creates two treasures. When attempt foiled, Ryan passes to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Jessica's Will with both modes targeting Ryan. Elsha's prowess triggers and gets plus one plus one. Then Zack adds three red and exiles Command Tower, Thought Lash, and Grinding Station. He plays a Command Tower from Exile. He taps his Fiery Eye lit to cast Thought Lash from Exile, and Elsha gets plus one plus one. This is game over for the table, so in response, Sean activates Cormella, adding three mana. He casts Burn Offering, sacrificing Cormella as an additional cost. Cormella triggers, and Sean returns Swan Song to his hand. Then Sean adds four black. Sean casts Swan Song, targeting Thought Lash. Thought Lash is countered, and Zack creates a 2 2 bird. Next, Zack casts Grinding Station from Exile, and Elsha gets plus one plus one. He moves to combat and attacks Alex with Elsha. Alex blocks with Karlov, Karlov dies, and Zack passes to Sean. During his upkeep, Sean wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Mana Vault. He taps his Mana Confluence to help recast his commander, Carmella. Sean ends his turn. During his upkeep, Alex puts a counter onto Aether Vile. He draws and casts Deafening Silence. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He recasts his commander, Karlov. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with his bird. Sean takes it, and Alex passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, he gets two red through his carpet. He casts Eternal Witness. In response, Zack activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Mana Crypt, milling three to find an answer on top of his library through Elsha. He does not find it, and Eternal Witness resolves. Witness enters, and Ryan returns Shatter Skull Smashing to his hand. He casts Shatter Skull Smashing, where X equals 2, targeting his Arena Rector. Rector dies, Ryan exiles it, and fetches up a Vivian on the hunt onto the battlefield. Ryan activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Rocco, fetching up a Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. Felidar enters, and Ryan flickers Vivian on the hunt. Ryan activates Vivian's first ability, since it's a new instance of Vivian, sacrificing Felidar Guardian, and fetching up a Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic Guide enters and returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Vivian on the hunt. Ryan activates Vivian, sacrificing Felidar Guardian again, fetching up Kiki Jiki, Mirror Breaker, onto the battlefield. Ryan activates Kiki Jiki, creating a copy of Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide enters and returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Kiki Jiki. Ryan presents a loop of activating Kiki Jiki, creating a copy of Felidar Guardian, and flickering Kiki Jiki each time. He does this over and over, creating infinite hasty Felidars. He moves to combat, attacks with his army, and Ryan wins the game. And Zack gets to start us off. Zack draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He passes. Alan draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn. He casts a Mox Diamond, pitching a Flooded Strand. He casts a Turn 1, Draneth Magistrate. The table checks their hands for removal, and Alan ships it to Travis. Travis draws and starts off by casting Mox Amber. He casts a Chrome Mox. In response, Zack cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. Chromox enters, and Travis imprints a Swan Song. He casts a Mana Ball. He follows up with an Arcane Signet. Finished up, Travis ends the turn. Jay draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Chromox, imprinting Sylvan Tutor. He casts Chalice of the Void, where X equals zero. He casts Survival of the Fittest. He exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a Greed. He activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding a Boreal Druid, and fetches up a Collector Oof into his hand. Jay passes the turn. At the end of Jay's turn, Zack casts Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Rhystic Study onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Zack. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Volcanic Island. He passes. During his upkeep, Alan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and casts Imperial Recruiter. Recruiter enters and he fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Jay with Draneth Magistrate. Jay takes it and Alan shifts the turn to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He takes no other actions and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Jay loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Guy's Cradle. He casts a Collector Roof. 
The table settles in for a long one, and Jay ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a plateau. He casts a Rhystic Study. He passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and moves the combat. He attacks Zack with Dranith and Imperial Recruiter. Zack takes it, and Alan ships the turn to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes a damage from his Mana Ball. Locked out by Collector Oof, Travis gives the turn to Jay. During Jay's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding an Endurance. He fetches up a Magus of the Candelabra into his hand and sends the turn to Zack. Zack draws, holds open mana, and passes. During his upkeep, Alan loses another Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a High Market. He moves to combat and attacks Travis with Dranith and Imperial Recruiter. Travis takes it, and the turn moves to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes the damage from his Mana Ball. He does nothing else and passes. During Jay's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Forest. He follows it up with a Magus of the Candelabra. Rhystic Study triggers, and Jay pays. He ends the turn. Zack draws, begs everyone to feed his Rhystic Study, does nothing else, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, takes no actions, and ships the turn to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays an Ancient Tomb as his land for turn. He ends the turn. During his upkeep, Jay wins his first Mana Crypt roll of the game. He draws and plays a Hall of the Bandit Lord. He moves to combat and attacks Travis with Oof and Magus. Travis takes it, and Jay sends the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays an Ottawara Soaring City as his land for turn. He passes to Alan. During Alan's upkeep, he finally wins a Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He suspends Greater Gargadon. He moves to combat and attacks Travis with Dranith and Imperial Recruiter. Travis takes it, and Alan passes the turn. During Travis's draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Solve the Equation. Rhystic Study triggers, and Zack draws. Solve the Equation resolves, and Travis fetches up a Chain of Vapor into his hand. He passes the turn to Jay. During his upkeep, Jay loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and taps his Guy's Cradle, floating to green. He taps his Magus of the Candelabra to untap the Cradle. He taps the Cradle, now floating 3 green total. He casts Expedition Map. Rhystic triggers, and Jay pays. Jay moves to combat and attacks Travis with Collector Oof. Travis declares no blocks, takes the hit, and Jay ships the turn. Zack draws, does nothing once again, and passes to Alan. During his upkeep, Alan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Dockside Extortionist, paying for Rhystic Study. Dockside enters, and Alan creates 10 treasures. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Dranith and Recruiter. Zack takes it, and Alan gives the turn to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He does nothing else, and gives the turn to Jay. During his upkeep, Jay wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding a Thought Not Seer. He fetches up a Kogla, the Titan Ape, into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Collector Oof and Magus. Zack takes it, and Jay passes the turn. Zack draws and casts a Mana Ball. He ends the turn. During his upkeep, Alan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Besaju, who endures as his land for turn. He casts a Wirewood Symbiote, paying the Rhystic Tax. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Dranith, Dockside, and Recruiter. As the table's punching bag continues, Zack takes the hit. Alan passes the turn to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He curses the top deck gods, discards a Mox Diamond, and ships the turn. During his upkeep, Jay wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Oof and Magus. Zack continues to take it, and the turn moves to Zack. Zack draws, sighs deeply, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and starts off his turn by casting Finale of Devastation, where X equals 3. Rhystic Study triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Jay activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding Teemer Sabertooth. He fetches up an Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, into his hand. Still in response, Zack casts Mistcast, targeting Finale of Devastation. Finale is countered, and Alan moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Dockside, Dranith, Recruiter, and Wirewood Symbiote. Zack declares no blocks and takes the hit. Alan ships the turn to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He casts Faithless Looting. Rhystic triggers, and Travis taps his Ancient Tomb to pay. He draws two and discards two. He plays a Gemstone Caverns for turn, and passes. During his upkeep, Jay wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, and does some Graveyard and Creature Math. He taps his Guy's Cradle, and activates Magus to help cast Seedborn Muse. Rhystic triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts Intuition, targeting Travis. He fetches up a Thassa's Oracle, Force of Negation, and a Force of Will. Travis gives him the Force of Will. Zack casts Force of Will, paying a life, and exiling a blue card, targeting Seedborn Muse. Seedborn is countered, and the turn moves to Zack. Zack draws for turn, holds up Interaction, and passes. During Alan's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. He draws and starts off by evoking Fury, exiling a red card. Rhystic triggers, and Alan pays. In response, Zack casts Silence. Silence resolves, and Fury enters the battlefield. Alan kills Collector Oof and Magus of the Candelabra. Then Fury is sacrificed. 
Alan moves to combat and attacks Zack with everything. Zack takes it, and Alan passes the turn. At the end of Alan's turn, Jay cracks his expedition map, fetching up a Nykthos shrine to Nyx into his hand. The turn moves to Travis. During his draw step, Travis takes the damage from his Meta Ball. In his main phase, he casts a Relic of Legends paying for Rhystic Study. Free from Collector Roof, but locked out by Dranith Magistrate, Travis passes to Jay. During Jay's upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Nykthos as his land for turn. He activates Survival, discarding Kogla, and fetches up a Hope Tender into his hand. He taps his Hall of the Bandit Lord to help cast Hope Tender, paying the Rhystic Tax. Hope enters and gains haste. Jay taps Hope Tender to untap his forest. He ends the turn. Zack draws and casts Jewel Lotus. It is at this point that Zack is reminded of Jay's Chalice of the Void, and Jewel Lotus is countered. Zack casts the Talisman of Indulgence and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and starts off by cracking two treasures to help cast Grand Abolisher, paying for Rhystic Study. After conversing with the table, Travis casts Lightning Bolt targeting Wirewood Symbiote. Rhystic triggers and Zack draws. Symbiote dies and, in response to Grand Abolisher, Zack casts Pact of Negation, which gets countered by Chalice of the Void. With no other answers, Grand Abolisher resolves. Alan casts a Teemer Sabertooth, paying for Rhystic Study. Alan then presents a loop of activating Sabertooth to bounce Dockside and then recasting Dockside to make infinite treasures, paying all of the Rhystic Triggers each time. He casts Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 4. Rocco enters and fetches up an Arena Rector onto the battlefield. Alan sacrifices Rector to Greater Gargadon, removing a Suspend counter. When Rector dies, it triggers and Alan exiles it. He fetches up a Vivian on the hunt onto the battlefield. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Rocco, and fetches up a Feldar Guardian onto the battlefield. Feldar triggers and Alan flickers his Vivian. He activates the new instance of Vivian, sacrificing his Felidar, and fetches up a Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic Guide enters, reanimating the Felidar Guardian. Felidar enters and flickers Vivian. Alan activates Vivian, sacrificing Felidar to fetch up a Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker onto the battlefield. Alan activates Kiki Jiki, creating a copy of Karmic Guide. The token of Karmic Guide enters and reanimates Felidar Guardian. Felidar enters and flickers Kiki Jiki. Alan then presents a loop of activating Kiki, creating infinite hasty copies of Felidar Guardian, swings at his opponents for lethal, and Alan wins the game. Zack wins the Blue Farm Plagiarism Deck Building Challenge and gets to start us off. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Tundra. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows it up with a Felwar Stone. He passes. Greg draws a card for turn and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He casts a Mox Amber. He passes. Jordan draws and plays a Spire Garden. He gives the turn to Lincoln. Lincoln draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He casts Chrome Mox and printing Mystical Tutor. He casts a turn one, Mystic Grimora. In response, Greg cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystical Tutor. In response, Zack casts Dispel, targeting Mystical Tutor. Greg's Tutor is countered, and Mystic Grimora resolves. Sitting pretty, Lincoln passes. Zack draws and casts his own Mystic Grimora. Lincoln's Remora triggers, and he draws. With Zack's Remora still in the stack, Lincoln cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then Zack's Remora resolves. Zack plays a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He shifts the turn to Greg. Greg draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He taps it, giving Lincoln a 1-1 spirit to help cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He passes. Jordan draws and plays a Grove of the Burn Willows. He taps Grove of the Burn Willows to help cast Dockside Extortionist. It resolves and Jordan creates six treasures. He cracks five of his treasures to help cast his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals two. It resolves and he fetches up a devoted druid onto the battlefield. He cracks another treasure to help cast Swift Reconfiguration, targeting devoted druid. Lincoln and Zach Shermore trigger and they both draw. In response, Greg casts Mindbreak Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Swift Reconfiguration. Lincoln and Zach Shermore trigger and they draw. Mindbreak resolves and exiles Swift Reconfiguration. Dismayed, Jordan passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays an Ottawara Soaring City. He gives the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts his other commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to Krom Bat and attacks Greg with Krom. Greg takes it and in his second main phase, Zack pays one and draws one through Timna. He ships the turn. Greg draws and in true control player fashion, takes no actions and passes the turn. Jordan draws and plays a Forest. He casts Wirewood Symbiote. He taps Devoted Druid for a green and activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Rocco to his hand, untapping Devoted Druid. He casts Llanowar Elves and passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws, takes no other actions, passing the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack pays for his Remora. He draws and immediately moves to combat. He attacks Greg with Krom. Greg takes it and in his second main phase, Zack pays one and draws one through Timna. Zack plays a Polluted Delta. He ships the turn. 
Greg draws and takes no other actions, passing to Jordan. Jordan draws and in his first main phase, he casts Worldly Tutor. Lincoln and Zach's Remora's trigger and they both draw. Worldly Tutor resolves and Jordan fetches up a Vizier of Remedies onto the top of his library. All through, he passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln pays for his Remora. He draws and takes no other actions, he passes. At the end of Lincoln's turn, Zach cracks his polluted delta, pays a life, and fetches up a watery grave onto the battlefield tapped. He casts Brainstorm. Lincoln's Remora triggers and he draws. Zach realizes he probably shouldn't play Legacy after sequencing this play, and Brainstorm resolves. He draws three and puts two back on top. Still in the end step, Jordan casts Veil of Summer. Both Remora's trigger and Zach and Lincoln draw. Veil resolves and Jordan draws. The table braces for Jordan's next move, but he doesn't have one. Lincoln discards the hand size and the turn moves to Zach. During his upkeep, Zach pays for his Remora. He draws and moves to combat, attacking Greg with Krom. Greg takes it, and in his second main phase, Zach pays one and draws one through Timna. Zach casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. He follows it up with a Lotus Petal, Channeler, and Lincoln's Remora Trigger. Lincoln draws, and then Zach surveils Wishclaw Talisman into his graveyard. Zach passes. At the end of Zach's turn, Greg casts Brainstorm. Both Remora's Trigger, and both players draw. Brainstorm resolves, and Greg draws three and puts two back on top. Zach discards the hand size, and the turn moves to Greg. Greg draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He explains to Zach how you're supposed to fetch after Brainstorm, not before. The table laughs and Greg taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Lincoln a spirit to help cast Flame Sweep. Both Remora's trigger and both players draw. In response, Jordan floats a green with his Devoted Druid. He activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Devoted Druid back to his hand, untapping his Lana War Elves. Flame Sweep resolves, nuking the board. Greg cracks his Windswept Teeth, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He passes. Jordan draws and plays a Forest. He recasts his Devoted Druid. Jordan gives a turn to Lincoln. During his upkeep, Lincoln lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mana Crypt. Zach's Remora triggers, and he draws. Lincoln follows it up with a Rhystic Study. Remora triggers, and Zach draws again. In response, Zach casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, countering Rhystic. Lincoln then follows up by casting his commander, Lazav the Multifarious. It enters, and Lincoln surveils Notion Thief into his graveyard. He passes and discards Necrotic Ooze to hand size. During his upkeep, Zach lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He moves to combat and attacks Greg with Krom. Greg takes it, and in his second main phase, Zach casts Preordain. He scries two and draws a card. He casts a Talisman of Dominance. He passes. Greg draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. It resolves, and he activates Jace's first ability, targeting Jordan. Jordan mills two, and Greg draws. Greg gives the turn to Jordan. Jordan draws and plays a Sunbaked Canyon. He taps it to help cast Vizier Remedies. This is a big problem, because it goes infinite with Devoted Druid. Surprisingly, it resolves. He taps his Devoted Druid for mana. He activates it and attempts to untap it. In response, Zach cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting Devoted Druid. In response, Jordan activates Devoted Druid's untap ability again. He presents a loop of putting a minus one minus one counter on Devoted Druid to untap it, but the counter being negated through Vizier. He does this over and over, generating infinite green mana. The Cyclonic Rift resolves and Devoted Druid bounces back to Jordan's hand. He casts Walking Ballista, where X equals 500,000. In response, Zach casts Intuition, targeting Greg. He fetches up a Pact of Negation, Savine's Reclamation, and an Underworld Breach. Greg gives Zach Pact of Negation. Zach casts Pact of Negation, targeting Walking Ballista. In response, Jordan casts Ricochet Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Pact. In response, Lincoln casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Ricochet Trap. With no more answers, Fierce counters Trap and Pact counters Ballista. With the stack cleared up and with his win attempt thwarted, Jordan uses some of his infinite green to recast his Devoted Druid. He passes. At the end of Jordan's turn, Lincoln casts Entomb. Zach finally remembers his Chrome triggers and he draws. In response, Greg casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Entomb. Entomb is countered, and the turn moves to Lincoln. During his upkeep, Lincoln wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts a Mox Amber. He casts Ashiok, Dream Render. Krom triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Ashiok. In response, Lincoln casts Miscast, targeting Fierce. Miscast counters Fierce, and Ashiok resolves. Lincoln activates Ashiok, targeting himself. He mills four, and all other players exile their graveyards, which includes Zack's Underworld Breach and Zavine's Reclamation. With nothing else, Lincoln passes. During his upkeep, Zack pays for his Pact of Negation. He draws and moves straight to combat, attacking Greg with Krom. Greg takes it, and in his second main phase, Zack casts that Mana Crypt. He casts Peer into the Abyss. In response, Lincoln casts Delay, targeting Peer. Peer is countered and exiled with three time counters on it. Zack gives the turn to Greg. Greg draws and then pays two life to help cast Jataxian Probe, targeting Zack. 
He looks at Zack's hand and draws a card. He activates Jace, milling Zack for two and drawing a card. He plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts Curiosity, targeting Thrasios? <laughs> the table reminds Greg that he actually has two commanders, and then everyone laughs. Krom triggers, and Zack draws. Greg moves to combat and attacks Zack with Thrasios. Zack takes it, Curiosity triggers, and Greg draws. He ends his turn. Jordan draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln loses his mana crit roll and takes three damage. He draws and activates Ashiok. He mills four, and all other players exile their graveyards. He passes. During his upkeep, Zack removes the time counter from Pure into the Abyss. Also during his upkeep, he loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Badlands. He moves to combat and attacks Greg with Krom. Greg declares no blocks, and before damage, he casts Pyroblast, targeting Krom. Krom is destroyed, and in his second main phase, Zack casts Necropotence. In response, Greg casts Counterspell, targeting Necropotence. Necropotence is countered, and Zack wonders if he can resolve a meaningful spell this game. He recasts Krom. He gives the turn to Greg. Greg draws and plays an Underground River. He activates Jace, targeting Zack. In response, Lincoln activates Lazav, targeting Notion Thief in his graveyard. Lazav's ability resolves and becomes a copy of Notion Thief. Zack mills two, and Lincoln draws a card through Notion Thief. Greg follows it up with a Seedborn Muse. With a powerful value engine on the board, Greg passes. Greg untaps with Jordan. Jordan draws, takes no actions, passing the turn. At the end of Jordan's turn, Greg casts Drown in the Lock, targeting Lazav. Lazav is destroyed, and still in the instep, Greg taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Jordan a 1-1 spirit to help activate Thrasios. He scries one and reveals an Assassin's Trophy into his hand. The turn moves to Lincoln. Greg untaps with Lincoln. During his upkeep, Lincoln wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Reflecting Pool. He activates Ashiok's ability, targeting himself. He mills four, and all other players exile their graveyards. He recasts his commander, Lazav. In response, Greg taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Jordan a 1-1 spirit to help activate Thrasios. He scries one and reveals a Thassa's Oracle into his hand. Lazav enters, and Lincoln surveils, leaving the card on top. The turn passes to Zack. Greg untaps with Zack. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. Also during his upkeep, Zack removes the time counter from Pure into the Abyss. He draws and moves to combat, attacking Ashiok with Krom. Ashiok dies, and in his second main phase, Zack casts Mystical Tutor. In response, Greg cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. Mystical Tutor resolves, and Zack fetches up a Toxic Deluge onto the top of his library. He pays two life to help cast a taxi and probe, targeting Greg. In response, Lincoln activates Lazav, targeting Notion Thief in his graveyard. In response, Greg activates Thrasios, scrying one, and revealing a Mox Diamond into his hand. Lazav then becomes a copy of Notion Thief, and Jataxi and Probe resolves. Zack looks at Greg's hand, and Lincoln draws through Notion Thief. Zack plays a Mana Confluence. He recasts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Greg casts Assassin's Trophy, targeting Lazav. Lazav is destroyed, and Lincoln fetches up an island onto the battlefield. Zack ends his turn. Greg draws and casts Imperial Seal. In response, Jordan adds a green through Devoted Druid. He untaps it through its ability. He uses his floating mana to help sacrifice Sunbake Canyon to draw a card. Imperial Seal resolves, and Greg fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He activates Jace's first ability, targeting Zack. Zack mills two, and Greg draws. He activates Thrasios, scrying one, and revealing a Limb Duel's Vault into his hand. He taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Jordan a 1-1 Spirit to help cast Limb Duel's Vault. Krom triggers, and in response, Lincoln casts Pongify, targeting Seaborn Muse. Pongify resolves, Seaborn is destroyed, and Greg creates a 3-3-8. Krom's trigger resolves, and Zack draws. Limduel's Vault resolves, and Greg repeats the process five times, paying five life. He then shuffles and rearranges the top five. All set up, Greg passes. Jordan draws and makes infinite mana through his Devoted Druid combo. The table braces, and he uses that mana to cast... Elvish Mystic. <laughs> he plays a Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth. He passes. During his upkeep, Lincoln loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and takes no other actions, passing the turn. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. Also during his upkeep, he removes the last time counter from Pure into the Abyss. He casts it, and in response, Lincoln flashes in a Dress Down. In response to Dress Down, Jordan uses his Devoted Druid combo to create infinite green mana. Dress Down resolves, and Lincoln draws a card. Then, Pure into the Abyss resolves. Zack draws half of his library and loses half of his life, rounded up. He draws and casts Mox Opal. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Gemstone Caverns. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He casts Dark Ritual, adding 3 black. He casts Cabal Ritual, with Threshold, adding 5 black. He casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Lincoln. He fetches up a card from Lincoln's Library into Exile face down. He casts Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. He casts Silence. Knowing that this is the moment to act, Lincoln casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Silence. Silence is countered, and Zack follows it up with a Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. He activates Top, drawing a card and putting Top on top. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Dressdown. 
It bounces, and Lincoln sacrifices an island to continue the chain, targeting Temna. Zack sacrifices Watery Grave to continue the chain, targeting his Mox Opal. He holds priority and floats mana from his Chrome Mox, Mox Diamond, and Mox Opal. With Zack's copy of Chain of Vapor on the stack, Lincoln flashes in Dress Down again. In response, Zack casts Swan Song, targeting Dress Down. Dress Down is countered this time, and Lincoln creates a 2 2 bird. Chain of Vapor resolves, and Zack sacrifices a Badlands to continue the chain, targeting his Mox Diamond. He sacrifices Tundra to bounce his Chrome Mox, and then decides to stop there. Zack casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards an Esper Sentinel. He recasts Mox Opal. He recasts Mox Diamond, discarding Blood Crypt. He casts what he eggs out from Lincoln's Library with Praetor's Grasp. Sass is Oracle. It resolves, and with the trigger on the stack, he casts Tainted Pact. He exiles cards from the top of his library until he reveals Demonic Consultation. He puts Consultation into his hand. Zack explains that he has three cards left in his library and is trying to play around any possibility of Chrome Triggers losing him the game. With Thassa's Oracle trigger on the stack, Lincoln casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting Thassa's Oracle. It resolves, and Thassa is bounced to Lincoln's hand. The ability resolves, and Zack looks at the top card of his library, putting it onto the bottom. He casts his own Thassa's Oracle. It resolves, but the table is all out of answers this time. Thassa's Oracle trigger resolves, and Zack wins the game. Alex screams the loudest and gets to start us off. Alex draws a card for turn and plays a snow-covered swamp. He casts Blood Pet and passes the turn. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts a Mana Vault. He sends the turn to Garner. Garner draws and plays a Plateau. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He ships the turn. Jordan draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts Elvish Mystic. He ends the turn. Alex draws and plays a Snow-Covered Swamp. He sacrifices Blood Pet, adding a black. He casts Tangle Wire. The table groans as they strap in for a long game, and Alex gives the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his Mana Vault. He draws and plays the Gemstone Caverns. He passes. During Garner's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays Care Keep. He ends his turn. During Jordan's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays Turn Timber, Serpentine Wood into play tapped. All through, he passes the turn. During Alex's upkeep, he removes a counter from Tangle Wire, then taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a snow covered swamp. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Having locked down everybody's board, including his own, he ships the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his mana vault. He plays a Misty Rainforest. Zack gives the turn to Garner. During Garner's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and, thanks to Tangle Wire, he has nothing to do, so he passes. During Jordan's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a Plains. He casts Soul Ring. Ready for his next turn, he passes to Alex. During Alex's upkeep, he removes a counter from Tangle Wire, then taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a Snow Covered Swamp. He casts Feed the Swarm, targeting Ragavan. Ragavan is destroyed, and Alex loses a life. He sacrifices his Lion's Eye Diamond, discards his hand, and adds three black. He casts his Commander, Turgrid, God of Fright. He passes the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Turgrid triggers, and Alex puts Misty Rainforest onto the battlefield from Zack's Graveyard. Zack casts Mana Crypt. He follows it up with a Felwar Stone. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He sacks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Krom, Ludovic Opus. Turgrid triggers, and Alex puts Jeweled Lotus onto the battlefield. Zack moves to combat and attacks Alex with Krom. Alex takes it, and Zack ends his turn. During Garner's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws, and with nothing else going on, he passes the turn, discarding the hand size. When he discards, he discards Blazing Root Walla into exile, and then casts it for its madness cost. It resolves, then the turn moves to Jordan. During Jordan's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a plateau. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase, and then adds a green through his carpet. He casts Fauna Shaman. Krom triggers, and Zack draws. All through, Jordan ships the turn. During Alex's upkeep, he removes a counter from his Tangle Wire and then taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and casts Liliana of the Bale. He activates Liliana's first ability and then everyone discards a card. Turgrid triggers and Alex puts Dress Down onto the battlefield from Zack's graveyard. Dress Down enters and Alex draws. Alex passes to Zack. At the end of Alex's turn, Dress Down is sacrificed. During Zack's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. Also during his upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his Mana Vault. He draws and casts. Ad Nauseam. With no other answers from his opponents, Ad Nauseam resolves. Zack reveals a Lion's Eye Diamond, Demonic Tutor, Enlightened Tutor, Arcane Signet, Watery Grave, Hallowed Fountain, City of Brass, 
Thassa's Oracle, Mnemonic Betrayal, Flusterstorm, Arid Mesa, Vampiric Tutor, Simeon Spirit Guide, Polluted Delta, Badlands, Demonic Consultation, Toxic Deluge, Ponder, Mox Opal, Esper Sentinel, Lotus Petal, Savine's Reclamation, Talisman of Curiosity, Island, Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, and decides to stop there. He casts Mox Opal. He follows it up with a Lotus Petal. He plays an Island for turn. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters and, in response, Zack cracks his Lotus Petal, adding a black. Turgid triggers and Alex puts Lotus Petal onto the battlefield from Zack's graveyard. Zack casts Demonic Consultation, naming Hypnox, and exiles his entire library. Thassa's Oracle's trigger resolves, and Zack wins the game. Mark wins the Flavor Town Challenge and gets to start us off. Mark draws a card for turn and plays a Forest. He casts Birch Lore Rangers. He passes. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays a Yava Maya Coast. He casts a Soul Ring. He ends this turn. Bailey draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Mox Amber. Bailey ships it to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Windswept Key. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He casts a Mana Crypt. He moves to a second main phase and adds one green through his carpet. He casts a Finehorn Elves and passes the turn. Mark draws and plays a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx as his land for turn. He casts a Fauna Shaman. He activates Birch Lore Rangers, tapping two elves, adding a green. He casts Copperhorn Scout. Mark passes to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Forest. He casts Fertile Ground on his Yavamaya Coast. He casts his Commander, Halden, Avid Arcanist. Ashani ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Mountain. He casts his Commander, Krark the Thumbless. Bailey passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and in his first main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He plays Shatter Skull to hammer pass into play untapped, paying 3 life. He casts his commander, Rocco, Cabaret Caterer, where X equals 3. It enters, and Mike fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside enters, and Mike creates 3 treasures. All through, Mike passes. Mark draws and starts off his turn by casting Summoner's Pact. He fetches up an Allosaur Shepherd into his hand. He plays a Forest for turn. He casts Allosaur Shepherd. He activates Fauna Shaman, discarding Wirewood Symbiote, and fetches up a Quirion Ranger into his hand. He activates Birch Lore, adding a green. He casts Quirion Ranger. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Copperhorn Scout. Copperhorn triggers and Mark untaps his creatures. Then Mike blocks with Dockside and Copperhorn dies. In his second main phase, Mark activates Birch Lore twice, tapping four elves, adding two green. He activates Nykthos, adding four more green. He casts his commander, Azuri, Renegade Leader. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a forest to his hand, untapping his Fauna Shaman. Mark ends his turn. Ashani draws and plays a mountain. He casts his other commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. He moves to combat and attacks Bailey with Paco. Paco triggers, and Ashani exiles an island, Bailey exiles a Rite of Flame, Mike exiles a Food Chain, and Mark exiles Natural Order. Then Paco gets 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Then Bailey takes 7, and in his second main phase, Ashani casts Rite of Flame from Exile through Halden, adding 2 red. He casts Simic Signet. Ashani ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He casts a Mana Ball. He casts his other commander, Sakishima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. Bailey ships the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He casts Teamer Sabertooth. This is game over for the table because there are just barely enough artifacts and enchantments to go infinite with Dockside. So in response, Mark channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Ashani's Soul Ring. Soul Ring is destroyed, and Ashani fetches up an island onto the battlefield. Then Teamer Sabertooth resolves. Mike activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He recasts Dockside. It enters, and Mike creates four treasures. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim, and regretfully, passes to Mark. During his upkeep, Mark activates Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, adding 6 green to pay for Summoner's Pack. He draws and plays a Forest. He activates Birch Lore, adding a green. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a Forest to untap Birch Lore. He activates Birch Lore, adding another green. He casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals 1. He returns Wirewood Symbiote from his graveyard to the battlefield. He activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Allosaurus Shepherd, untapping his Fauna Shaman. Finished up, Mark passes. Ashani draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mark with Paco. Paco triggers, and Ashani exiles Salvage, Bailey exiles Solve the Equation, Mike exiles Path to Exile, and Mark exiles Skull Clan. Then Paco gets 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Then Mark takes 11, and in his second main phase, Ashani plays a Crystal Vein. He casts Archmage Emeritus. He casts Beast Within, targeting Sakashima. Archmage triggers, and Ashani draws. Sakashima is destroyed, and Bailey creates a 3-3 Beast. With nothing else, Ashani passes. During his draw step, Bailey takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. Bailey passes. At the end of Bailey's turn, Ashani casts Path to Exile from Exile through Halden, targeting Mike's Teamer Sabertooth. Archmage Emeritus triggers, and Ashani draws. In response, Mike activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Rocco back to his hand. Then Sabertooth is exiled, and Mike fetches up a forest onto the battlefield tap. The turn moves to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, and in his first main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He plays the Taiga for turn. He casts his commander, Rocco, where X equals 4. 
In response, Mark activates Quarian Ranger, bouncing a forest, untapping his Birch Lore Rangers. He activates Birch Lore, adding a green. He activates Wirewood Symbiote, bouncing Birch Lore, untapping his Fauna Shaman. He activates Fauna Shaman, discarding Birch Lore Rangers, and fetching up an Elvish Spirit Guide into his hand. With Rocco still in the stack, Bailey cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He then sacrifices his Fiery Islet to draw a card, hoping to find an answer. He does not find anything, and with everyone else out of answers, Rocco resolves. Rocco enters, and Mike fetches up an Emil the Blast onto the battlefield. He pays three to activate Emil, flickering his Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist enters, and Mike creates four treasures. Mike presents a loop of flickering Dockside with Emil, netting infinite treasures. He activates Emil, targeting Rocco. Rocco exiles, but Mike chooses to put it back into the command zone instead of exile. Mike can now repeatedly cast Rocco, fetching up every creature from his library onto the battlefield. Mike casts Rocco again. He fetches up Goto Bandit Warlord onto the battlefield. Goto enters, and Mike fetches up Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. He equips Helm of the Host to Goto. Mike moves to combat, triggering Goto, creating a copy, and getting infinite combats. He attacks the table over and over, until they are dead, and Mike wins the game. And Alex gets to start us off. Alex draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Neoform. He casts a Birds of Paradise, and passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He also casts a Birds of Paradise and passes the turn. Zack draws and starts off his turn by paying two life to cast a Taxi and Probe, targeting Sean. He looks at Sean's hand and draws a card. He plays an Arid Mesa for turn. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Zack ends his turn. Sean draws and plays a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Ragaman, Nimble Pilferer. Sean ships the turn. Alex draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts Rhystic Study. In response, Sean casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Study. In response, Alex casts Swan Song, targeting Force. In response, Zack cracks his Arid Mesa, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts Spell Pierce, targeting Swan Song. Swan Song is countered, and Rhystic Study is countered and exiled. With nothing else, Alex passes. During his upkeep, Ryan casts Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Mana Crypt onto the top of his library. He draws and casts Mana Crypt. He casts Sylvan Library. He plays a Gaia's Cradle for turn. He casts Finehorn Elves. Ryan ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Plateau. He casts Talisman of Creativity. Zack gives the turn to Sean. Sean draws and moves to combat. He attacks Alex with Ragavan. Alex takes it, Ragavan triggers, Alex exiles a Gaia's Cradle, and Sean creates a treasure. In his second main phase, he casts Mox Diamond, discarding Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. He casts Bergy, God of Storytelling. Sean ships the turn to Alex. Alex draws and casts Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. He casts Duraneth Magistrate. Ryan sinks his head, and Alex passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes 3 damage. During his draw step, he draws 2 extra through Sylvan Library, paying 8 life to keep them both. He plays a Plateau, and passes the turn. Zack draws, plays a Flooded Strand, and passes. Sean draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Ragavan. Zack takes it, Ragavan triggers, Zack exiles Ledger Shredder, and Sean creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Sean casts Ledger Shredder, but not from exile, but from his hand. Bergy triggers and adds a red. He casts Phantasmal Image. Shredder triggers and Sean connives Underworld Breach, giving Shredder a plus one plus one counter. Phantasmal Image resolves and enters as a copy of Duraneth Magistrate. Ryan goes to scream into a pillow as Sean passes to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He casts Esper Sentinel. In response, Ryan casts Worldly Tutor. In response, Zack casts an offer you can't refuse. Worldly Tutor is countered, and Ryan creates two treasures. Then Esper resolves, and Alex passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. During his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. He plays a Yavamaya Cradle of Growth as his land for turn. He casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Finehorn Elves as an additional cost, paying the Esper tax. In response, Alex hard casts Force of Negation, countering and exiling Eldritch. Next, Ryan casts Birthing Pod. Shredder triggers, and Sean connives Fierce Guardianship, giving Shredder a counter. Ryan pays 2 life to activate Birthing Pawn, sacrificing Birds of Paradise, and fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. It enters, and Ryan creates 5 treasures. With nothing else, Ryan passes. Zack draws, plays a Bloodstained Mire, and passes. Sean draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Ragavan and Ryan with Ledger Shredder. They both take it, Ragavan triggers, Zack exiles Winds of Rebuke, and Sean creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Sean casts Mystic Remora. Sean ships the turn to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He casts Swift Reconfiguration, targeting Ryan's Dockside. Remora triggers, and Alex pays for it. Swift resolves, and Alex ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt flip. During his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. In his main phase, he casts Orcish Lumberjack. He casts Wirewood Symbiote. Shredder triggers, and Sean connives Mana Confluence. 
Ryan pays two life to activate Birthing Pod, sacrificing Wirewood Symbiote, and fetches up a Grand Abolisher onto the battlefield. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield tapped. He also cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Hallowed Fountain onto the battlefield tapped. The turn moves to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He transmutes Muddle the Mixture, fetching up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Zack creates 17 treasures. With tons of mana and two Dranaths on the battlefield, Zack passes. During his upkeep, Sean pays to keep his Remora. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Ledger Shredder, Ragavan, and Bergy. Ryan blocks Bergy with Orcish Lumberjack and takes the rest. Ragavan triggers, Ryan exiles Infernal Plunge, and Sean creates a treasure. Finished up, Sean passes. Alex draws, takes no actions, and passes. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his mana crypt flip and takes three damage. During his draw step, he draws two extra through Sylvan Library, putting two back on top. In his main phase, he casts Treasonous Ogre. He activates Birthing Pod, sacrificing Ogre, fetching up a Fury onto the battlefield. Fury enters, and Ryan has a deals 3 damage to Alex's Dranith and 1 damage to Sean's Dranith. Sean's Phantasmal Image Dranith triggers, and he sacrifices it. Then the other Dranith dies. Next, Ryan casts his Commander, Rocco, Cabaretti, Caterer, where X equals 4. He fetches up an Arena Rector onto the battlefield. He casts Mind Collapse for its alternate cost, sacrificing a Mountain, targeting Rector. Esper, Remora, and Shredder all trigger. Sean connives Swansong, draws from Remora, then Alex draws from Esper. Then Mind Collapse deals 5 to Arena Rector. Rector dies, Ryan exiles it, and fetches up a Vivian on the hunt onto the battlefield. Ryan activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Rocco, fetching up a Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Vivian. Ryan activates Vivian, sacrificing Felidar, fetching up a Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic Guide enters and returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Vivian again. Ryan activates Vivian, sacrificing Felidar, fetching up Kiki Jiki onto the battlefield. Ryan activates Kiki, creating a copy of Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide enters and returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Kiki. Ryan presents a loop of creating infinite Felidars through Kiki. He moves to combat, swings with everything, and Ryan wins the game. Chad won the Med School Speed Run and gets to start us off. Chad draws a card for turn and plays a Tropical Island. He casts the Noble Hierarch and passes the turn. Zack draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to cast a Felwar Stone. Zack ends his turn. Cal draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Skirk Prospector and passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Plateau. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts an Arcane Signet. Ryan ships the turn. Chad draws and plays an Ottawara Soaring City as his land for turn. He casts Green Sun Zenith where X equals 2. He fetches up a Hermit Druid onto the battlefield, shuffling Green Suns back into his library. The team realizes that they are in trouble as Chad gives the turn to Zack. At the end of Chad's turn, Zack casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Wheel of Fortune onto the top of his library. Zack draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hand and draws 7. Zack casts Mox Opal and passes to Cal. Cal draws, plays a Marsh Flats, and passes. Ryan draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Elf as it enters. He casts Arbor Elf. He casts a Wild Growth and sends the turn to Chad. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Also in the end step, Cal cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt into play untapped, paying two life. Cal casts a Braid, killing Chad's Hermit Druid. The turn moves to Chad. Chad draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter. Chad passes. Zack draws and plays a Plateau. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Talisman of Dominance. He casts his Commander, Timna the Weaver. Zack gives the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Command Tower. He cracks his Skirk Prospector to cast his Commander, Prosper Tomebound. He moves to his end step, Prosper triggers, and Cal exiles Wooded Foothills off of the top of his library. Cal passes. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts its Commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 4. He fetches up an Arena Rector onto the battlefield. Ryan casts Reckless Rage, targeting Rashmi and his own Arena Rector. In response, Zack casts an offer you can't refuse. Reckless Rage is countered, and Ryan creates two treasures. Next, Ryan casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards an Ancient Tomb. Ryan suspends Greater Gargadon. He activates Greater Gargadon, sacrificing Arena Rector to remove a Suspend counter. Arena Rector triggers and, in response, Zack exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting Ryan. Ryan then mills 15 cards, including his Kiki Jiki. Then Arena Rector's ability resolves, Ryan exiles it, and fetches up a Vivian on the hunt onto the battlefield. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Rocco, and fetches up a Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. 
Feldar enters, and Ryan flickers Vivian on the hunt. Ryan activates Vivian, sacrificing Feldar, and fetches up a Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic Guide enters and reanimates Feldar Guardian. Feldar enters and flickers Karmic Guy. Karmic Guide enters and reanimates Kiki Jiki. Ryan activates Kiki, creating a copy of Felidar Guardian. Ryan presents a loop of flickering Kiki with his copies of Felidar Guardian, then creating a copy of Felidar, creating infinite Felidar tokens. Ryan moves to combat, attacks with his infinite hasty Felidars, and Ryan wins the game. And Ryan gets to start us off. Ryan draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a Lana War Elves. Ryan passes. Chad draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding an island. Chad ends his turn. Zack draws, plays a City of Brass, and passes. Cal draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Ball. Cal ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Gaia's Cradle. He casts Imperial Recruiter. In response, Chad cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Drain, countering Recruiter. Ryan shifts the turn. Chad draws, and in his first main phase, he has three colorless through Mana Drain. He plays a Misty Rainforest. He casts his commander, Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter. Chad passes. Zack draws, plays a Volcanic Island, and passes. Cal draws and plays a Shattered Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play untapped, paying three life. He casts his commander, Prosper Tomebound. He moves to his end step, Prosper triggers, and Cal exiles Cabal Ritual. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and also plays a Shattered Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play untapped, paying three life. He casts Survival of the Fittest. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Chad cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a Breeding Pool into play tapped. Chad draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City as his land for turn. He casts Carpet of Flowers. Rashmi triggers, and Chad reveals a Veil of Summer into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Rashmi. Zack takes it, and Chad passes the turn. At the end of Chad's turn, Zack casts a Brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back on top. Zack draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Chad channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Survival of the Fittest. In response, Ryan activates Survival of the Fittest, discarding Skyclave Apparition and fetching up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. Then Survival is destroyed and Ryan fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. With Dockside still on the stack, Chad casts Reset. Rashmi triggers and Chad reveals a Dispel into his hand. With Reset still on the stack, Ryan casts Eladomri's Call. He fetches up an Arena Rector into his hand. Then Reset resolves and Chad untaps his lands. Then Dockside resolves and Zack creates four treasures. Zack casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Wheel of Fortune. Ryan sighs, and Chad responds by casting Veil of Summer, drawing a card as it resolves. Chad then flashes in a Dress Down. It enters, and he draws a card again. Then everyone discards their hand and draws seven. Zack casts a Lion's Eye Diamond and passes the turn. At the end of Zack's turn, Dress Down is sacrificed. Cal draws and plays a Black Cleave Cliffs into play untapped. He casts Lelia, the Blade Reforged. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Lelia. Lelia triggers, and Cal exiles Calling the Weak off of the top of his library. Lelia triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Cal casts Cabal Ritual from Exile. Prosper triggers and Cal creates a treasure, then he adds three black. He casts Mayhem Devil. Cal moves to his end step, Prosper triggers, and Cal exiles Bolus's Citadel. Lelia triggers and gets a counter. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Stomping Ground into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds two green through his carpet. He casts Birds of Paradise. He casts Avacyn's Pilgrim. He casts Elvish Mystic. He casts a Soul Ring. Now just swimming in mana, Ryan passes to Chad. Chad draws, and in his first main phase, he adds two blue through his carpet. He plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it and pays a life. Mayhem Devil triggers and kills Ryan's Birds of Paradise. He then fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He casts Jinja Taxus Progress Tyrant. The entire table groans as Rashmi triggers. In response, Chad pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, putting Manglehorn from his graveyard onto the top of his library. Then Rashmi's trigger resolves, Chad reveals Manglehorn, casting it. It enters and targets Cal's Mana Ball. In response, Cal casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Manglehorn's ability, redirecting it to Chad's Mox Diamond. Diamond is destroyed, then Jinja Taxis resolves. Chad casts Lotus Petal. Jinja Taxis triggers and Chad creates a copy. Chad moves to combat and attacks Zack with Rashmi. Zack takes it, and all through, Chad ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Talisman of Creativity. Jinja Taxis triggers, countering the spell. Zack casts Arcane Signet, entering tapped through Manglehorn. Zack passes. Cal draws and moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Lelia. Lelia triggers, and Cal exiles Overmaster, giving Lelia a counter. Then Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Cal casts Overmaster from Exile. Prosper and Jinja Taxis trigger. 
Overmaster is countered, and Cal creates a treasure into play tapped through Manglehorn. He plays a snow-covered swamp for turn. He casts Bolas' Citadel from Exile. Prosper triggers, and Cal creates a tapped treasure. Citadel enters tapped, Cal looks at the top card of his library, and then moves to his end step. Prosper triggers, and Cal exiles Command Tower. Lelia triggers and gets a counter. Still in the end step, Ryan flashes in a Cathar Commando. Then Ryan sacrifices it, targeting Bolas' Citadel. Mayhem Devil triggers and kills Ryan's Avacyn's Pilgrim. Then Citadel is destroyed, and the turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, he has three green through his carpet. He plays a Horizon Canopy for turn. He casts his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals four. He fetches up a Ranger Captain Abios onto the battlefield. It enters, and Ryan fetches up a Wirewood Symbiote into his hand. Ryan ends his turn. Chad draws, and in his first main phase, he has two blue through his carpet. He casts Wandering Archaic. Rashmi triggers, and Chad reveals a Wooded Foothills into his hand. He plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He cracks it and pays a life. Mayhem Devil triggers and deals a damage to Manglehorn. He then fetches up a forest onto the battlefield. He casts Talisman of Curiosity. Jinja attacks his triggers and creates a copy. Chad ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Tundra. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He cracks his Lion's Eye Diamond, discards his hand, and adds three blue. Mayhem Devil triggers and kills Ryan's Llanowar Elves. Zack casts his other commander, Krom, Ludovic Sopus. He moves to Krombat and attacks Cal with Krom. Cal takes it, and in his second main phase, he pays a life and draws a card through Timna. Zack passes the turn. During his draw step, Cal takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he plays a Command Tower from Exile through Prosper. Prosper triggers and, in response, Cal cracks both of his treasures floating to red. Mayhem Devil triggers twice and kills Manglehorn. Then Cal creates a treasure through Prosper. Next, Cal casts Reckless Impulse, Jinja Taxis, and Wandering Archaic trigger. Cal pays for Wandering Archaic, and Reckless Impulse is countered. Cal moves to combat and attacks Chad with Lelia. Lelia triggers, Cal exiles Demonic Tutor, and Lelia gets a counter. Chad takes seven, and in his second main phase, Cal casts Demonic Tutor from Exile. Prosper, Archaic, and Krom all trigger. Zack draws, Cal pays for Archaic, and then creates a treasure. Then Cal fetches up a card into his hand. Cal moves to his end step and exiles Deadly Dispute through Prosper. Lelia triggers and gets a counter. Still in the end step, Chad casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting Ranger Captain. Jinja Taxis and Rashmi trigger. Chad reveals a Void Winner into his hand through Rashmi, and then creates a copy of Rift targeting Lelia. Lelia bounces, then Ranger Captain bounces. The turn moves to Ryan. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, he has three white through his carpet. He recasts Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters, and he fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. Ryan passes the turn. Chad draws, and in his first main phase, he has three green through his carpet. Chad convokes Court of Calling, where X equals seven. Rashmi and Jinja Taxis trigger. Chad creates a copy, and then fetches up a Nyx Bloom Ancient onto the battlefield. He then reveals a Spell Seeker through Rashmi, casting it. Krom triggers, and Zack draws. It enters, and Chad fetches up a Delay into his hand. Then the original chord resolves, and Chad fetches up a Coma, Cosmos Serpent, onto the battlefield. Next, Chad taps his mana for triple through Nyx Bloom Ancient and casts Void Winnower. It resolves, and Chad ends his turn. During Zack's upkeep, Chad creates a Serpent through Coma. Zack draws and moves to combat. He attacks Chad with Krom. Chad takes it, and in his second main phase, Timna triggers. In response, Zack casts Enlightened Tutor. Jinja Taxis and Wandering Archaic trigger. Zack doesn't pay, Chad copies it, and fetches up an Isochron Scepter onto the top of his library. Then Jinja Taxis counters Enlightened Tutor. With the Timna trigger still in the stack, Zack casts Vampiric Tutor. Archaic triggers, Chad copies it, fetching up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then Zack also fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life as well. He then pays a life and draws a card through Timna. Zack casts Toxic Deluge, paying nine life. In response, Chad cracks his Lotus Petal to cast Delay. Mayhem Devil, Jinja Taxis, and Rashmi all trigger. Chad reveals a Nexus of Fate into his hand, copies Delay targeting Toxic Deluge, then Cal kills Ryan's Elvish Mystic. Then Delay counters and exiles Toxic Deluge with three time counters on it. With no other answers and shut down completely, Zack passes to Cal. During Cal's upkeep, Chad creates a Serpent off of Coma. During his draw step, Cal takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays a Mountain for turn. Cal recasts Lelia. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Lelia. Lelia triggers, Cal exiles Mana Confluence, and Lelia gets a counter. Ryan blocks with Rocco, and both die. Cal moves to his end step and exiles Baleful Mastery through Prosper. The turn moves to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, Chad creates a Serpent through Coma. Ryan draws, resigns to his fate, and passes to Chad. Everyone sees that they are dead to Chad's lock, concede, and Chad wins the game. Jay was able to name the most Gen 1 Pokemon and gets to start us off. But Travis has a pre-game action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a flooded strand. Jay draws a card for turn and plays a forest. He casts Burgeoning. Jay passes. Zack draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. 
Burgeoning triggers, and Jay puts an emergence zone onto the battlefield. Zack cracks his wooded foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Rite of Flame, adding two red. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He follows it up with a Mana Ball. Zack ships the turn to Alan. Alan draws and plays a Command Tower. Burgeoning triggers, and Jay puts a Guy's Cradle onto the battlefield. Alan casts a Mana Crypt. Alan takes a deep dive into the Brain Tank and then emerges by casting a Chrome Mox. It enters, and he imprints a Teamer Sabertooth. Everyone is concerned with what happened in that tank, and Alan casts a Wirewood Symbiote. All through, he passes. At the end of Alan's turn, Travis casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a dramatic reversal onto the top of his library. Travis draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogah. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his other commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He gives the turn to Jay. Jay draws and plays a Forest. He casts his commander, Yison the Wanderer Bard. He casts an Expedition Map. He ships the turn. Zack draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Alan with Ragaman. Alan takes it, Ragaman triggers, Alan exiles Skyclave Apparition, and Zack creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Zack plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He passes the turn to Alan. During his upkeep, Alan wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and plays a Reflecting Pool. He casts his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 2. Rocco enters, and Alan fetches up a Grand Abolisher onto the battlefield. He ends his turn. Travis draws and taps the City of Brass to cast a Mana Vault. He casts Isochron Scepter. Chrome triggers and Zack draws. Isochron Scepter resolves and Travis imprints Dramatic Reversal. He activates Isochron Scepter, untapping all of his non-land permanents. Travis presents a loop of tapping Mana Vault, activating Isochron, and untapping both, netting infinite colorless mana. He uses this mana to activate Thrasios, drawing his deck, putting all lands into play tapped. He casts his Mana Rocks through his infinite colorless mana and repeats the Isochron Scepter loop to generate infinite red and green mana. He casts Lightning Bolt, dealing 3 to Alan. He casts Turn the Earth, shuffling Lightning Bolt back into his library, and gains 2 life. He casts Noxious Revival, putting Turn the Earth on top of his library. He activates Thrasios, drawing Turn the Earth and Lightning Bolt. He does this process again, but now he shuffles Noxious Revival and Lightning Bolt back into his library through Turn the Earth. He presents a loop of bolting his opponents until they are dead, and Travis wins the game. Catherine brought the most outlandish socks to the table and gets to start us off. Catherine draws and plays an underground sea. She casts a Mox Amber. She casts her commander, Rograk, son of Rogah. She casts a Mana Vault. She casts a turn one, Time Twister. In response, Daquan casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling Mr. Cremora. Twister is countered and exiled, and the turn moves to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Marsh Flats. Shedding a single tear for his Mr. Cremora, Daquan gives the turn to Alan. Alan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to cast Grim Monolith. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Wooded Foothills. He casts a Birds of Paradise. In response, Daquan cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Birds resolves, and Alan passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts a Mystic Remora. In response, Daquan casts an Entomb, fetching up a Villas, Broker of Blood, into his graveyard. Remora resolves, and Zack follows it up by casting a Chrome Mox and printing Mental Misstep. He ships the turn to Catherine. During Catherine's draw step, she takes a damage from her Mana Vault. She plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying 2 life. She casts a Vampiric Tutor. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Then Catherine fetches up a card onto the top of her library and loses two life. She gives the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Reanimate, targeting Villas. Remora triggers and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts Swan Song. In response, Daquan cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Veil of Summer. Remora triggers and Zack draws again. Veil resolves and Daquan draws. Swan Song fizzles and Reanimate resolves. Villas returns to the battlefield and Daquan loses eight life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws eight cards. With nothing else, Daquan passes, discarding to hand size. Alan draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 2. Rocco enters, and he fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside enters, and Alan creates four treasures. All set, he gives the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he pays for his Mr. Cremora. He draws and casts a Mox Opal. He plays the Spire of Industry as his land for turn. He taps it to help cast Dranath Magistrate. Dranath resolves, and Zack ships the turn to Catherine. During Catherine's draw step, she takes a damage from her Mana Vault. She plays a Forbidden Orchard as her land for turn. She passes. Daquan draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it and pays a life. Villas triggers, and Daquan draws a card. Then he fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Daquan passes. Alan draws and casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Dranath. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Dranath dies, and he follows it up with a Food Chain. Remora triggers, and Zack draws again. Food Chain resolves, and Alan floats a red and exiles his Birds of Paradise to Food Chain, adding two green. He exiles Rocco to Food Chain, adding four red, putting Rocco into the command zone. He exiles Dockside for three white. He recasts his commander, Rocco, where X equals three. 
In response, and with a delightfully wretched grin, Daquan flashes in, an opposition agent. Agent resolves, Rocco enters, and Daquan searches Alan's library and exiles a Skyclave apparition. Dismayed, Alan gives the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he pays to keep his remora. He draws and plays an underground sea. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He passes the turn. During her draw step, Catherine takes a damage from her mana vault. She plays a Luxury Suite and ships the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it and pays a life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws. He then fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Survival of the Fittest. Remora triggers and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, countering Survival. Next, Daquan casts a Dranath Magistrate. He moves to combat and attacks Catherine with Villas. In response, Catherine taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Jay a spirit to cast Ad Nauseam. Remora triggers and Jay draws. In response, Daquan activates Villas, paying two life, drawing two cards, killing Rograk. He activates Villas, paying two life, drawing two cards, killing Rocco. In response, Zack casts Forza Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, countering Ad Nauseam. Then Catherine takes the damage from Villas, and with nothing else, Daquan passes, discarding to hand size. Alan draws, takes no actions, and passes. During Zack's upkeep, he pays to keep his remora. He draws and moves the combat, swinging Timna at Alan and the spirit token at Catherine. They each take it, and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, Timna triggers, and Zack pays two life and draws two cards. He plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it, paying a life. It is at this point that Daquan smiles again and points out the opposition agent. He exiles a Tundra, looking at Zack's hand as well. Sorrowfully, Zack ships the turn to Catherine. During her draw step, Catherine takes a damage from her mana vault. With nothing else to do, she gives the turn to Daquan. During Daquan's upkeep, Zack casts Silence, locking out opponents from casting spells this turn. Daquan draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He moves straight to combat, attacking Zack with Villas for his transgressions. Zack takes eight, and Daquan passes the turn. Alan draws, plays a Plateau, and passes. At the end of Alan's turn, Daquan cracks his Scalding Tarn, paying a life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws. He fetches up a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. Villas triggers again and Daquan draws two. The turn moves to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he lets his Remora die. He draws and moves to combat. In response, Daquan pays two life to activate Villas, targeting Zack's spirit. Villas triggers and Daquan draws two. The spirit dies and Zack attacks Catherine with Temna. She takes it and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, he pays a life and draws a card through Temna. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Marsh Flats. He gives the turn to Catherine. During his upkeep, Catherine pays four to untap her Mana Vault. She draws and plays a Polluted Delta. She passes. At the end of Catherine's turn, Daquan casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws two. The turn moves to Daquan. During his upkeep, Daquan casts Silence. Silence resolves, shutting out opponents from casting spells this turn. He draws and casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He plays Zack's Tundra as his land for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Ariok Salvagers. He cracks his LED, discarding his hand, adding three white. He activates Ariok Salvagers, returning LED to his hand. Daquan presents a loop of sacrificing and returning LED through Ariok Salvagers to generate infinite mana of every color. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He activates Thrasios, drawing his library, putting all lands onto the battlefield tapped. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters, triggers, and Daquan wins the game. Ashani had the most moving interpretive dance and gets to start us off. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts a Birds of Paradise. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays an Island. He pays two life to catch Detaxian Probe, targeting Sean. He looks at Sean's hand and draws a card. He casts a Soul Ring. Zack passes. Ryan draws and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Seize the Day. He casts a Reckless Impulse, exiling a Crystal Vein and a Rite of Flame. He ends his turn. Sean draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. He follows it up with a Talisman of Dominance. He ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Plateau. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 2. Rocco enters, and Ashani fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside enters, and Ashani creates 6 treasures. He casts an Imperial Recruiter. It enters, and Ashani fetches up a Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker into his hand. He casts Query and Ranger. He passes. Zack draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He floats a blue, then casts Frantic Search. He draws two, discards two, and untaps his two lands. He casts a Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He casts a Goblin Engineer. It enters, and he fetches up a Jeweled Lotus into his graveyard. Zack gives the turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Crystal Vein from Exile as his land for turn. He casts Rite of Flame from Exile, adding 2 red. Ryan casts his commander, Rionia, Fire Dancer. He ends his turn. Sean draws and plays a Marsh Flats. 
He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. Sean passes. A Shawnee draws and casts a Grasp of Fate. It enters and exiles Goblin Engineer, Rionia, and Malcolm. Ryan moves Rionia to the command zone. A Shawnee moves to combat and attacks Sean with all of his creatures. Sean takes the hit, and a Shawnee ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga triggers. He floats mana and sacrifices it, fetching up a Soul Ring onto the battlefield. He casts a Chaos Warp, targeting Grasp of Fate. It resolves, Ashani shuffles in Grasp of Fate, and then reveals a Mana Crypt, putting it onto the battlefield. Grasp of Fate triggers, and Malcolm, Rionia, and Goblin Engineer return to the battlefield. Goblin Engineer enters, and Zack fetches up a Spell Skite into his graveyard. Ryan ends his turn. Sean draws and casts a Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Chain of Vapor. He plays a Command Tower as his land for turn. He casts a Glenhorn Buccaneer. In response, Zack casts Mana Drain, countering Glenhorn. Sean moves to combat and takes his revenge out on Zack by attacking him with Malcolm. Zack takes the hit, Malcolm triggers, and Sean creates a treasure. With nothing else, Sean passes. At the end of Sean's turn, Ashani activates his Quirion Ranger, returning Taga to his hand and untapping his Birds of Paradise. He casts Beast Within, targeting Goblin Engineer. In response, Zack cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. Zack hard casts Deflecting Swat, changing the target of Beast Within to Imperial Recruiter. Beast Within resolves, Imperial Recruiter is destroyed, and Ashani creates a 3-3 Beast. The turn moves to Ashani. During Ashani's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Taiga. He casts a Teamer Sabertooth. The table knows that this is game over, so in response, Ryan casts a Braid, dealing three damage to Dockside Extortionist, killing it. Teamer Sabertooth then resolves, and Ashani casts Lightning Bolt, killing Goblin Engineer. Ashani moves to combat and attacks Zack with Rocco, Quirion Ranger, and his Beast. Zack takes the hit, and Ashani gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws, and in his first main phase, he has three colorless through Mana Drain. He casts a Felwar Stone. He ends his turn. During Ryan's upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Sean with Rionia. Sean takes it, and Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Sean taps his Talisman of Dominance to help cast a Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. The turn moves to Sean. Sean draws and casts Reanimate, targeting the Glenhorn Buccaneer in his graveyard. In response, Zack hard casts Force of Negation. In response, Sean hard casts Force of Will, targeting Force of Negation. Force of Will resolves, Force of Negation is countered, and with Reanimate still in the stack, Ryan casts a Deflecting Swat, targeting Reanimate. Deflecting Swat resolves, changing the target of Reanimate to Zack's Goblin Engineer in his graveyard. Reanimate resolves, Goblin Engineer enters, and Sean loses two life. Engineer triggers, and Sean fetches up a Lion's Eye Diamond into his graveyard. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Malcolm. Zack takes the hit, Malcolm triggers, and Sean creates a treasure. Sean ends his turn. During Ashani's upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt trigger. He draws and casts a Toski, Bearer of Secrets. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with his Beast and Teamer Sabertooth, and attacks Zack with Quirion Ranger and Rocco. Both players take the hit. Toski triggers, and Ashani draws four cards. In his second main phase, Ashani plays a Gemstone Caverns. He casts an Archon of Ameria. He ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays an Ottawara Soaring City into play tap through Archon of Ameria. He gives the turn to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Cursed Mirror, entering as a copy of Toski. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Rionia and a Cursed Toski. Zack takes the hit, Toski triggers, and Ryan draws two cards. Ryan passes. Sean draws and moves to combat. He decides to continue to pick on Zack, attacking him with Malcolm. Zack takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Sean creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Sean taps his Talisman of Dominance to help cast a Dothy Voidwalker. He ends his turn. During his Shawnee's upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with Quirion Ranger and Zack with the rest of his creatures. Both players take the hit, and Zack dies. His Goblin Engineer that is under Sean's control ceases to exist. Toski triggers, and Ashani draws six cards. In his second main phase, Ashani plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Ground onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts a Tender Shoot Dryad and gains the city's blessing. He ships the turn to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, Ashani creates a 1-1 Sapperling, and Ryan wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts a Cathartic Pyre, dealing three damage to Archon of Ameria, and it gets exiled through Voidwalker. Ryan casts a Humble Defector. He casts a Wheel of Fortune. In response, Ashani casts a Braid, dealing three damage to Voidwalker, killing it. Wheel of Fortune then resolves, and each player discards their hand and draws seven. Ryan plays a Mountain for turn. He sacrifices his Crystal Vein to add two colorless. He casts a Mana Bolt. He casts a Valakut Awakening, putting all four cards from his hand onto the bottom of his library and drawing five. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Mox Opal. He casts a Desperate Ritual, adding three red. He casts a Heat Shimmer, targeting Humble Defector. In response, Sean channels Ottawara Soaring City, targeting Defector. Defector bounces back to Ryan's hand, and Heat Shimmer fizzles. Ryan cracks his Lotus Petal to help recast Humble Defector. He moves to combat, and Reunion triggers. He targets Humble Defector, creating six copies. 
Ryan activates all of his defector copies and draws a total of 12 cards. He gives three defectors to Sean and three to Ashani. Ryan moves to a second main phase and casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Mountain. He casts a Final Fortune. In response, Sean casts a Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Ad Nauseam. With no other answers, Ad Nauseam resolves. Sean reveals a Mana Confluence, Imperial Seal, Deflecting Swat, Notion Thief, Mind Break Trap, and a Red Elemental Blast, deciding that stopping at three life is probably a good idea. Sean casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, exiling Final Fortune. Disappointed that he isn't passing to himself, Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, all of the humble defector copies are exiled and Ryan discards to hand size. During Sean's upkeep, Ashani makes a sapperling. Sean draws and casts a Praetor's Grasp, targeting Ryan. He fetches up a card from Ryan's library into exile face down. He casts said card, which turns out to be an Underworld Breach. In response, Ashani casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing his Gemstone Caverns, fetching up a Gaia's Cradle onto the battlefield. Ashani then casts a Silence. It resolves, locking out opponents from casting spells this turn. Disappointed, Sean moves to combat. He attacks Ashani with Malcolm. Ashani takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Sean creates a treasure. Sean shifts the turn to Ashani. At the end of Sean's turn, Ashani activates Teamer Sabretooth and returns Rocco to his hand. Sean discards the hand size, and the turn moves to Ashani. During Ashani's upkeep, he loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Grand Abolisher. With no answers, Abolisher resolves, locking out opponents. He casts an Eternal Witness. It enters, and he returns Doxide Extortionist from his graveyard to his hand. He casts Doxide Extortionist. It enters, creating 11 treasures. Ashani presents a loop of bouncing Doxide to his hand with Teamer Sabretooth and recasting it again and again to create infinite treasures. He returns Eternal Witness to his hand and casts it. It enters, and he returns Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker from his graveyard to his hand. He returns Eternal Witness to his hand and recasts it. It enters, and he returns Imperial Recruiter from his graveyard to his hand. He casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters, and he fetches up a Village Bell Ringer into his hand. He casts Kiki Jiki. He casts Village Bell Ringer. It enters, and in response, Ashani taps Kiki Jiki to create a copy of Village Bell Ringer. He presents a loop of untapping Kiki with the Bell Ringer's ETB, creating a copy of Bell Ringer and repeating it until he has infinite Bell Ringers with haste. He attacks each of his opponents for lethal, and Ashani wins the game. Zeb is a Dapper Dan man and gets to start us off. But Alana has a pregame action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling out of time. Zeb draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He pays two life to cash to Taxian Probe. He looks at TK's hand and draws a card. He casts Ragavan Nimble Pilfer and ships the turn. TK draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, choosing Wizard as it enters. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Taiga. He casts a Finehorn Elves and gives the turn to Alana. At the end of Ryan's turn, Alana casts Enlightened Tutor. She fetches up a Jeweled Lotus onto the top of her library and moves to her turn. Alana draws and plays a Polluted Delta. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. She casts Jeweled Lotus. She sacrifices Lotus to help cast her commander, Dehada, Binder of Wills. In response, Zeb puts a halt on Alana's fun by casting Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, countering Dehada. Alana passes the turn to Zeb. Zeb draws and moves to combat. He attacks TK with Ragavan. TK takes the hit and Ragavan triggers. Zeb creates a treasure and TK exiles an Imperial Seal. In his second main phase, Zeb casts Imperial Seal from Exile. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He ships the turn. TK draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Vohar, Valdanian Desecrator. He casts Mox Amber. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He casts an Arbor Elf. He casts a Wild Growth, enchanting his Taiga. He passes the turn to Alana. Alana draws and plays a Plateau. She casts Lurus of the Dream Den. She casts a Jeweled Lotus from her graveyard through Lurus. She gives the turn to Zeb. Zeb draws and moves to combat. He attacks TK with Ragavan. TK takes the hit, Ragavan triggers, Zeb creates a treasure, and TK exiles Thoughtscour. In his second main phase, Zeb casts Ride of Flame, adding two red. He casts Intuition, targeting Alana. He fetches up Spellseeker, Reanimate, and Scholar of the Ages. Alana chooses Scholar of the Ages, and the rest go to the graveyard. All through, Zeb ends his turn. TK draws and activates Vohar. He draws a card, discards Rushing River, and his opponents each lose a life, and he gains a life. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Grim Monolith. He passes the turn. At the end of TK's turn, Ryan cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Grounds onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He then casts Worldly Tutor. He fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library and moves to his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Sacred Foundry into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and Ryan creates five treasures. He casts his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 1. Rocco enters, and he fetches up a Wirewood Symbiote onto the battlefield. He ships the turn to Alana. 
Alana draws and sacrifices Jeweled Lotus, adding three white. She recasts Jeweled Lotus from her graveyard through Luris. She sacrifices Lotus again to help cast her commander, Dehada, Binder of Wills. She activates Dehada's second ability, revealing Dockside Extortionist, Marsh Flats, Luxury Suite, and the One Ring. She puts the One Ring into her hand and the rest into her graveyard, creating three treasures. She casts Rakdos Signet. She casts the One Ring. The One Ring enters and Alana gains protection from everything until her next turn. She activates the One Ring, putting a burden counter onto it and drawing a card. She moves to combat and attacks TK with Luris. TK takes the damage, Alana gains three, and then she passes the turn. Zeb draws and moves to combat. He attacks TK with Ragavan. TK takes it, Ragavan triggers, Zeb creates a treasure, and TK exiles in Tomb. In his second main phase, Zeb casts him Tomb from Exile, fetching up a Dockside Extortionist into his graveyard. He ends his turn. TK draws and activates Vohar. He draws a card, then discards Yawgmoth's Will. His opponents each lose a life, and he gains a life. He plays the Scalding Tarn for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield untapped, paying 2 life. He casts Necropotence. He activates Necropotence 10 times, paying 10 life, exiling 10 cards. He moves to his end step and puts the exiled cards into his hand. In response, Ryan activates Wirewood Symbiote, returning Rocco to his hand and untapping Arbor Elf. TK then discards the hand size, exiling the discarded cards. Ryan draws and casts Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 2. Everyone debates on whether or not to counter this, but they decide to let it resolve. Rocco enters, and Ryan fetches up Grand Abolisher onto the battlefield. With the table's ability to interact all shut off, Ryan casts Arena Rector. He suspends Greater Gargadon with 10 time counters. He activates Greater Gargadon, sacrificing Arena Rector to remove a time counter. Arena Rector triggers, Ryan exiles it, and fetches up Vivian on the hunt onto the battlefield. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Rocco, and fetches up Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. Felidar enters, flickering Vivian on the hunt. Ryan activates Vivian's first ability again, sacrificing Felidar, fetching up Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Karmic Guide enters and returns Felidar Guardian from the graveyard to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Vivian on the hunt. Ryan activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Felidar Guardian, fetching up Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker onto the battlefield. He activates Kiki Jiki, creating a copy of Karmic Guide. The Karmic Guide copy enters and returns Felidar Guardian from the graveyard to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Kiki Jiki. He presents a loop of activating Kiki, creating a hasted copy of Felidar Guardian, which enters and flickers Kiki. He repeats this process until he has 42,069 cats with haste. Ryan moves to combat, turns all of them sideways to kill the table, but they were all of them deceived, for the One Ring was cast on Alana's turn, and into it she poured her cunning, her spite, and her will to win every game. The One Ring to rule them all. Having protection from everything, Alana takes no damage. With nothing else, Ryan passes the turn to Alana, sacrificing his tokens. During her upkeep, the One Ring triggers and Alana loses a life. She draws and activates the One Ring. She adds a bird encounter and draws two cards. She plays a Scalding Tarn. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. She activates Dehada's first ability, giving Luris Vigilance, Lifelink, and Indestructible until her next turn. She moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Luris. Ryan takes the hit, and Alana gains three life. In her second main phase, Alana casts Grim Tutor. She fetches up a card into her hand and loses three life. She casts Jeweled Lotus from her graveyard through Luris. She casts Last Chance, getting an extra turn. She passes to, well, herself. During her upkeep, the One Ring triggers and Alana loses two life. She draws and activates the One Ring, adding another Burn Encounter and drawing three cards. She activates Dehada's second ability. She reveals Godless Shrine, Bergy God of Storytelling, Mana Confluence, and Chrome Mox. She puts Bergy into her hand and the rest into her graveyard, creating three treasures. She casts Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. She activates Harnfell, discarding a card and exiling Cabal Ritual and Mana Crypt off of the top of her library. She activates Harnfell again, discarding a card and exiling Gamble and Underworld Breach. She activates Harnfell, discarding a card, exiling Wheel of Fortune and Yawgmoth's Will. She casts Mana Crypt from Exile. She casts Cabal Ritual from Exile with Threshold, adding five black. She casts Underworld Breach from Exile. She casts Grinding Station. Grinding Station enters, and with the trigger on the stack, she sacrifices Mana Crypt, targeting herself, milling three. She then untaps Grinding Station. She activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Jeweled Lotus, and milling three again. She presents a loop of escaping Mana Crypt, untapping Grinding Station, adding two colorless with Crypt, then sacking it to Grinding Station to mill three cards. She repeats this process until she mills Mox Opal. She presents the same loop, but escapes Mox Opal this time, adding a red each time. She does this until she mills both Twin Flame and Dualcaster Mage. She escapes Twin Flame, targeting Loris. She holds priority and escapes Dualcaster Mage. Dualcaster enters and creates a copy of Twin Flame, targeting Dualcaster Mage. She presents a loop of creating infinite Dualcaster Mages with haste. She moves the combat and attacks Ryan with her mob of Dualcasters. In response, Ryan uses his Kiki Jiki Felidar loop to create infinite Felidars. He then proceeds to block each dual caster with two Felidars, killing all of them. This is when Alana realizes her mistake and must think of another plan. In her second main phase, Alana escapes Lotus Petal. She sacrifices Lotus Petal to help escape Mayhem Devil. 
Ryan, knowing his Felidars will get Sacrifice at the end of turn, activates Greater Gargadon, sacrificing a Felidar token. Holding priority, he sacrifices all the rest of his Felidar Guardian tokens. Then Gargadon's abilities resolve, and Ryan casts it from exile. Then Mayhem Devil resolves. Now, looking for another way out, Alana escapes Lotus Petal. Petal enters, untapping Grinding Station. She floats a red with Mox Opal, then activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Opal, targeting herself. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing one damage to Ryan, and Alana mills three cards. She sacrifices Lotus Petal, adding a red. Mayhem Devil triggers, and she deals another damage to Ryan. She escapes Mox Opal, untapping Grinding Station. She taps Mox Opal, adding a red, then activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Opal, targeting herself. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing a damage to Ryan, and then Alana mills three. She escapes Twin Flame, creating a copy of Mayhem Devil. She escapes Mox Opal, untapping Grinding Station. She taps Mox Opal, adding a red, activates Grinding Station, sacrifices Opal, targeting herself. Both Mayhem Devils trigger, Ryan takes two more damage, and she mills three cards. Alana escapes Twin Flame again, creating a third Mayhem Devil. She escapes Mox Opal, untapping Grinding Station. She taps Opal, adds a red, and activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Opal, targeting herself. The three Mayhem Devils trigger, dealing three damage to Ryan. She then escapes Mox Opal, untapping Grinding Station. She casts Gamble from Exile. She fetches up a card into her hand and then randomly discards Soul Partition. She casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Diamond enters, triggering Grinding Station. In response, she activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Rakdos Signet, targeting herself. The Mayhem Devils trigger, and Ryan takes another three. Then Alana mills three cards and untaps the Grinding Station. She sacrifices Lion's Eye Diamond, discards her hand, and adds three red. The Mayhem Devils trigger, and Ryan takes three more. She activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Mox Opal, targeting herself. The Mayhem Devils deal three more to Ryan, and Alana mills three. She presents a loop of escaping Lion's Eye Diamond, then sacrificing it to trigger her three Mayhem Devils and dealing three damage to Ryan. She repeats this until he is dead, and Alana wins the game. Cory wins the Monopoly game and gets to start us off. Cory draws for turn and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts out Mana Crypt. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystic Remora. Off to a strong start, he ships the turn to Alana. Alana draws and plays an Island. She casts an Aether Spell Bomb. Mystic Remora triggers and Cory draws. She passes the turn. Chris draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. Mystic Remora triggers and Cory draws again. He sacrifices his Lion's Eye Diamond, discards his hand, and adds three black. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast his commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two thralls. All in on his commander, Chris ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Plateau. He exiles Simeon's Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Talisman of Unity. Remora triggers and Cory draws. Ryan taps his Talisman to help cast Wild Growth, enchanting his Plateau, and Cory draws from Remora. He gives the turn to Cory. During his upkeep, Cory wins his Mana Crypt roll and then pays for his Remora. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast Grand Abolisher. He passes, discarding to hand size. Alana draws and plays an island. She casts Transmute Artifact. Remora triggers and Cory draws. She sacrifices Aether Spell Bomb and fetches up a Soul Ring onto the battlefield. She casts a Moon Silver Key and Cory draws through Remora. She ends her turn. Chris draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps his Mana Confluence and Ancient Tomb and sacrifices his Thralls to help cast his other commander, Dargo the Shipwrecker. He activates Tevis' second ability, sacrificing Dargo and drawing three cards. He ships the turn. Ryan draws and casts a Somber Walled Sage. He passes. During his upkeep, Cory loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He also lets his Remora die. He draws and plays a City of Brass. He taps it to help cast Pattern of Rebirth, enchanting his Grand Abolisher. He taps Mana Confluence to help cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing Tundra as an additional cost. He fetches up a Phyrexian Tower onto the battlefield. He taps it for two black, sacrificing Grand Abolisher. Pattern of Rebirth triggers, and Cory fetches up a Protean Hulk onto the battlefield. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Protean Hulk as an additional cost. Hulk triggers, and Cory fetches up a Carrion Feeder, Samwise Gamgee, and Activated Sleeper. Activated Sleeper enters as a copy of Protean Hulk. Diabolic Intent resolves, and Cory fetches up a card into his hand. He sacrifices the Sleeper to Carrion Feeder, and fetches up an Academy Rector and a Collector Roof. Samwise Gamgee triggers twice, and Cory creates two food. He sacrifices Academy Rector to Carrion Feeder, triggering Academy Rector. He exiles it, and fetches up a Necromancy onto the battlefield. Necromancy enters, and returns Protean Hulk to the battlefield. Samwise triggers, and Cory creates a food. He sacrifices Protean Hulk to Carrion Feeder, and fetches up a Seaborn Muse and an Esper Sentinel. Samwise triggers twice, and Cory creates two more food. With enough food to feed a village of hobbits, Cory ships the turn. Cory untaps with Alana through Seaborn. Alana draws and casts her commander, Emery, Lurker of the Lock. Emery enters, and Alana mills four cards, including a Thousand Year Elixir. She passes the turn. At the end of Alana's turn, Cory taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Vampiric Tutor. In response, Alana casts Swan Song. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Cory draws. In response, Cory taps his City of Brass to help cast Veil vale of Summer. Veil vale resolves and Cory draws a card. Swansong resolves, but Vampiric Tutor doesn't get countered through Veil. Vale. Then Cory creates a bird. 
Vampiric Tutor resolves, and Cory fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. The turn moves to Chris. Cory untaps with Chris through Seedborn. Chris draws and plays a luxury suite. He activates Tevisot's first ability, creating two thralls. He taps his Ancient Tomb and his Mana Confluence to help cast Fire Covenant, paying 23 life, paying the Esper tax. In response, Cory taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Flusterstorm, countering Fire Covenant. With his plan stopped and a huge chunk of his life gone, Chris passes. At the end of Chris's turn, Cory casts a Court of Calling, where X equals 2. He fetches up a Draneth Magistrate onto the battlefield. Cory untaps with Ryan through Seedborn. Ryan draws and casts a Grand Abolisher. In response, Cory casts Pact of Negation, countering Abolisher. Next, Ryan evokes Fury, exiling a red card. Fury enters, targeting Samwise Gamgee and Collector Roof. In response, Cory sacrifices them to Carrion Feeder, putting two plus one plus one counters onto it. Then Fury sacrifices itself. Ryan exiles an Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He pays two life to help cast Birthing Pod. Cory draws through Esper Sentinel, and Ryan ships the turn. During Cory's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He also taps his City of Brass and his Mana Confluence to help pay for his Pact of Negation. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Tevish with everything. Chris blocks Carrion Feeder with a Thrall, the Thrall dies, and Tevish takes the rest. In his second main phase, Cory plays a Breeding Pool into play tapped. He gives the turn to Alana. Cory untaps with Alana through Seedborn. Alana draws and casts a Riddlesmith. She casts a Felwar Stone and Cory draws through Sentinel. Riddlesmith triggers and Alana draws and discards. She sacrifices Moon Silver Key, fetching up a Mox Opal into her hand. She casts Mox Opal, triggering Riddlesmith, drawing and discarding. She plays a Polluted Delta for turn. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. She passes. At the end of Alana's turn, Cory sacrifices the food, gaining three life. Cory untaps with Chris through Seedborn. Chris draws and activates Tevis's second ability, sacrificing a Thrall and drawing two cards. He taps his Ancient Tomb and his Mana Confluence to help cast Demonic Tutor. Sentinel triggers and Cory draws. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Cory taps the City of Brass and his Mana Confluence to sacrifice three food, gaining nine life. Dockside enters and Chris creates eight treasures. He casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Draneth Magistrate. In response, Cory casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Bolt. In response, Chris activates his trap card and casts Ricochet Trap, targeting Force of Negation. Ricochet Trap resolves and changes the target of Force to trap itself. Force fizzles and, in response to Bolt, Cory sacrifices Draneth to carry and feed her. Next, Cory casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Ryan. He fetches up a card from Ryan's library and exiles it face down. He casts Gamble from Exile. He fetches up a card and then randomly discards Underworld Breach, which is what he tutored for. He recasts his commander, Dargo the Shipwrecker. With his wind stopped by the Magic Gods, Chris ends his turn. Cory untaps with Ryan through Seedborn. During Ryan's upkeep, Cory channels Beseju who endures, destroying Birthing Pod. Then Ryan fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He draws and casts his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 4. Rocco enters and Ryan fetches up an Arena Rector onto the battlefield. He ships his turn. During his upkeep, Cory wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Scrubland. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing an Entomb into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish with Carrion Feeder. Chris blocks a Dargo, Dargo dies, and Cory passes the turn. Cory untaps with Alana through Seedborn. Alana draws and casts Sensei's Divining Top. Riddlesmith triggers and Alana draws and discards. She activates Sensei's Top, looking at and rearranging the top three. She activates Top, drawing a card and putting Top on top. She activates Emery, targeting Aether Spellbomb in her graveyard. She casts Aether Spellbomb. Riddlesmith triggers and she draws and discards. She gives the turn to Chris. At the end of Alana's turn, Cory activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing Ottawara, Soaring City, onto the battlefield tapped. He sacrifices Birds of Paradise to Phyrexian Tower, adding two black. He taps the City of Brass and his Mana Confluence to help activate Thrasios. He scries one and reveals the Survival of the Fittest into his hand. Still in her instep, Alana sacrifices Aether Spellbomb, bouncing Seedborn Muse. Chris draws and activates Tevish's second ability. He sacrifices Dockside and draws two cards. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts a Mayhem Devil. He ships the turn. Ryan draws and casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Arena Rector as an additional cost. Arena Rector, Mayhem Devil, and Esper Sentinel trigger. Ryan pays for Esper, and Mayhem Devil deals one to Rocco, killing it. In response to the Rector trigger, Chris sacrifices a treasure and adds a red. Mayhem Devil triggers, targeting Somberwald Sage. In response, Ryan taps it for three white. Somberwald Sage dies, and Arena Rector's trigger resolves. Ryan exiles it and then fetches up a Vivian on the hunt onto the battlefield. Then Eldritch resolves and Ryan fetches up a Recruiter of the Guard onto the battlefield. Recruiter enters and Ryan fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He activates Vivian's first ability, sacrificing Recruiter of the Guard. He fetches up a Felidar Guardian onto the battlefield. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing one damage to Ryan. Felidar Guardian triggers, flickering Vivian. He activates Vivian, sacrificing Felidar Guardian. He fetches up a Karmic Guide onto the battlefield. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing one damage to Ryan again. Karmic Guide enters and returns Felidar Guardian to the battlefield. Felidar enters, flickering Vivian. 
He activates Vivian again, sacrificing Felidar. He fetches up a Kiki Cheeky Mirror Breaker onto the battlefield. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing one damage to Ryan. He activates Kiki, creating a copy of Karmic Guide. Karmic Guide enters, returning Felidar to the battlefield. Felidar enters and flickers Kiki. Ryan demonstrates a loop of activating Kiki, copying Felidar, and blinking Kiki each time. With this loop, he creates 10 million and one Felidar Guardians. He moves to combat, swings with everything, and Ryan wins the game. And Chris gets to start us off. But Corey has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a Cabal Ritual. Chris draws and casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Mana Vault. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Tibalt's Trickery. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast his commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two Thralls. He passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Carpet of Flowers. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Fury. He ships the turn. Cory draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters and Cory creates five treasures. He casts Mystic Remora. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He ends his turn. Alana draws and plays an island. She casts a Chrome Mox. Mystic Remora triggers and Cory draws. Chrome Mox enters and Alana imprints Born Upon a Wind. She casts her own Mystic Remora and Cory draws through his Remora. She ships the turn to Chris. During his upkeep, Chris loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his Mana Vault. He plays a Swamp for turn. He casts Jessica's Will, choosing both modes, targeting Alana. Both Remora's trigger and Alana and Cory draw. Jessica's Will resolves, Chris adds six red, and then exiles Cursed Mirror, Lion's Eye Diamond, and Animate Dead. He casts Cursed Mirror and Alana and Cory draw. Cursed Mirror enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist. Then Chris creates eight treasures. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Mayhem Devil. He sacrifices two Thralls and Mana Vault to help cast his commander, Dargo the Shipwrecker. Mayhem Devil triggers three times and Chris deals two to Dockside, killing it, and one to Cory. He activates Tevish's second ability, sacrificing Dargo to draw three cards. Mayhem Devil triggers and deals one to Cory. He sacrifices two treasures to help cast Animate Dead, targeting Dockside Extortionist. Alana and Cory draw through Remora and Mayhem Devil deals two to Cory. In response, Cory casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, targeting enemy dead. Remora triggers and Alana draws. In response, Chris sacrifices a treasure to help cast Ricochet Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Force of Will. Mayhem Devil and both Remora's trigger. Alana and Cory draw, and Mayhem Devil deals one damage to Cory. Ricochet Trap resolves, changing the target of Force of Will to Ricochet Trap itself. Force fizzles and Animate Dead resolves, returning Dockside Extortionist to the battlefield. Dockside enters and Chris creates eight more treasures. He sacrifices seven treasures to help cast Peer into the Abyss. Remora and Mayhem Devil triggers seven times. Chris deals seven to Cory, then Chris sacrifices four more treasures to pay for Remora. Mayhem Devil triggers four times, dealing four more to Cory. In response to Peer, Alana casts Swan Song. Swan Song resolves, Peer is countered, and Chris creates a 2 2 bird. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond and Alana and Cory draw. He sacrifices a treasure to help recast Dargo. Mayhem Devil triggers and deals one damage to Cory. With that insane turn finally over, Chris gives the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and in his first main phase he has one red through his carpet of flowers. He plays a Sacred Foundry into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Birthing Pod. Alana and Cory draw through Remora and Ryan ends his turn. During his upkeep, Cory pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts Chrome Mox and Alana draws. It enters and he imprints a Snapback. He sacrifices two treasures and taps Forbidden Orchard to help cast Ad Nauseam, giving Alana the spirit. Mayhem Devil triggers twice, dealing two to Cory, and then Alana draws through Remora. Ad Nauseam resolves, and Cory reveals a Time Twister, Deflecting Swat, Reign of Filth, Vampiric Tutor, Brain Freeze, Red Elemental Blast, Ancient Tomb, an Offer You Can't Refuse, Alchemist Retrieval, and an Elvish Spirit Guide, deciding to stop there. Unfortunately, low on life and not getting anything off of the Ad Nauseam, Cory passes, discarding the hand size. During her upkeep, Alana pays to keep her Mystic Remora. She draws and plays an island. She moves to combat and attacks Cory with the spirit. Cory takes it, and in her second main phase, Alana casts Tormod's Crypt. Remora triggers and Cory draws. She casts Mox Opal and Cory draws again. She casts her commander, Emery, Lurker of the Lock. Emery enters and Alana mills four, including a Grim Monolith and the One Ring. She casts Mox Amber and Cory draws. She passes, discarding to hand size. During Chris's upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and activates Tevish's second ability. He sacrifices Dargo to draw three cards. Mayhem Devil triggers and deals one to Emery. He plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Pirate as it enters. He casts a Forerunner of the Coalition. Forerunner enters and Chris fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library. He sacrifices Chromox, Dockside, and the Bird to help recast Dargo. Mayhem Devil triggers three times, dealing one to Cory, killing him, and two to Emery. Dargo enters, Forerunner of the Coalition triggers, and Ryan and Alana each lose one life. He sacrifices a treasure to help cast Cabal Ritual. Alana draws through Remora, and Mayhem Devil deals one to Alana. Cabal Ritual resolves, and Chris adds three black. He taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Obnixilus, the adversary, sacrificing Dargo as the casualty cost. Alana draws through Remora, and Mayhem Devil deals one to her. 
Both Obnixilus resolve, and Cory activates the copy's third ability, drawing 7 and losing 7 life. He taps his Cavern of Souls to help cast Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and Chris creates 8 treasures. He casts Feed the Swarm, targeting Mystic Remora. Alana draws once more before it gets destroyed, and then Chris loses a life. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He sacrifices a treasure and Dockside to help cast Culling the Weak. Mayhem Devil triggers and deals 2 to Alana. Culling resolves, and Chris adds 4 black. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. He sacrifices Jeweled Lotus, adding 3 red and dealing 1 to Alana through Mayhem Devil. He casts Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam resolves, and he reveals a Phyrexian Altar, Underworld Breach, Spire of Industry, Mountain, Demonic Tutor, Goblin Bombardment, and a Simeon Spirit Guide, deciding to stop there. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Phyrexian Altar. He recasts Dargo. In response, Alana casts Resculpt, targeting Phyrexian Altar. In response, Chris sacrifices Forerunner of the Coalition to the Altar, adding a red. Resculpt resolves, Altar is exiled, and Chris creates a 4-4 Elemental. With his plan stopped again, Chris passes to Ryan. Ryan draws, and in his first main phase, he adds 2 red through his carpet. He casts a Lotus Petal. He sacrifices it to help cast his commander, Rocco, Cavaretti Caterer, where X equals 3. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing 1 to Alana. Rocco enters and fetches up a Skyclave Apparition onto the battlefield. Skyclave enters, targeting Tormod's Crypt. In response, Alana sacrifices it, exiling Chris's graveyard. Ryan ends his turn. Alana draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. She casts a Mana Ball. She casts Soul Guide Lantern. Ryan sinks his head as he thought he already dealt with that problem. Lantern enters and exiles Lotus Petal from Ryan's graveyard. She casts an Aether Spell Bomb. She taps Ancient Tomb to help cast Arcane Signet. She ships the turn to Chris. During his upkeep, Chris loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He sacrifices a treasure to help cast Relic of Legends. Mayhem Devil triggers and deals 1 to the Spirit. He taps Dargo through Relic to cast Goblin Bombardment. In response, Alana sacrifices Aether Spellbond to draw a card, digging for an answer. She does not find it, and Goblin Bombardment resolves. Chris sacrifices Dargo through Goblin Bombardment, dealing 1 damage to Alana. Mayhem Devil triggers, dealing another 1 damage to Alana. Chris sacrifices Cursed Mirror and the Elemental to recast Dargo. In response, Alana sacrifices Soul Guide Lantern to draw a card. Once again, she does not find what she's looking for. Chris demonstrates a loop of tapping Dargo for mana through Relic of Legends and sacrificing it to Goblin Bombardment, dealing 1 damage to each opponent. He uses his floating mana to recast Dargo, reduced through his sacrifices to Goblin Bombardment. He repeats this over and over, dealing 1 damage to each opponent until they are dead, and Chris wins the game.